In 221 BC, the Qin militarily defeated the Zhou dynasty, gaining control of China. Emperor Qin ruled with harsh, absolute control. He strengthened and unified China, and he created a uniform currency and a standard writing system. Qin forced farmers to construct roads, palaces, and canals, and he planned to join and strengthen the walls to protect the empire. Qin's dynasty ended only four years after his death in 206 BC due to rebellion against his harsh rule. The Han Dynasty came to power in 202 BC and lasted 400 years. It was founded by a farmer turned soldier, Liu Bang. Emperor Han Wudi broke the aristocrats' control of government jobs by recruiting civil service employees chosen on the basis of competitive exams. The empire expanded and the population increased, requiring more food, which led to tenant farming. The Han Dynasty saw great developments in literature, the arts, inventions, and medicine. So some inventions of the Han Dynasty include paper, the cast iron plow, the water wheel, the wheelbarrow, and the rudder. So some of the things that we use every day were invented by the Han Dynasty back before um, in 202 BC. During the Han Dynasty, Chinese exploration led to the discovery of other cultures, as well as strong horses, strong horses Emperor Han Wudi wanted for battle. The emperor encouraged trade with Western regions, and China traded silk, spices, and luxury items for horses. By the AD 100s, a 4,000 mile long network of trade routes known as the Silk Road stretched from the Mediterranean Sea to China. The Silk Road linked Asia and Europe in trade and exchange of goods and culture for over 1,000 years. The Silk Road was the name for China's trade route with the West. It was named after China's primary export, the fine fabric. The trade route was first established to allow the Chinese to import horses. By the AD 100s, the route was 4,000 miles long. It extended from western China to the Mediterranean. Buddhism reached China from India via the Silk Road and spread after the fall of the Han Dynasty. Many emperors after Han Wudi were dishonest rulers and aristocrats continued taking land from farmers. People rebelled against the Han rulers. Rebel armies destroyed the Han capital, Luoyang, by AD 220, civil war divided China into many kingdoms. Buddhism provided stability for people during the upheavals and destruction of war. By the AD 400s, Buddhism had become one of China's major religions. The basic beliefs of Buddhism include suffering exists, but it has a cause, but it also has an end. Nothing is permanent and change is always possible. So now I'm going to show you this short video about the Great Wall of China. In Shaoling, one can find one of China's and the world's greatest wonders. It is the largest structure ever created by man, a potent expression of the continuity and sophistication of China's ancient civilization. Work began on the Great Wall of China around 220 BC. It was the creation of the first emperor, Qin Shi Huangdi. The wall is a tremendous piece of military engineering. It blends into the landscape, snaking through valleys and over mountains for mile after mile. It would have been extraordinarily difficult to build and shows the incredible will and determination of the ancient Chinese civilization. 
to conceive of this and be able to construct such extensive defences almost defies belief. The Great Wall winds its way across China from the Gobi Desert in the northwest to the Bohi Sea northeast of Beijing. That's a distance of over 4,000 miles. It's said that 300,000 men were harnessed to make this wall, and many died, their bodies mixed into the clay of the bricks, the very bricks that still make up much of the original wall. For that reason, it's called the Wall of Tears, the longest graveyard in the world. The human sacrifice was great, but so was the will of the emperors that had it built. And for centuries, the wall was all that stood between China and its most feared enemies, barbarians, Mongols, and nomadic tribesmen. The Great Wall exceeds the expectations of those that visit it today and more than fulfilled its purpose in antiquity. The scale is epic, and to the barbarians on the other side, it must have seemed insurpassable. In a rapidly changing China, construction is again reaching epic proportions. The Great Wall serves as a permanent reminder of the sacrifice of which this nation is capable. Now what you guys are going to do is go into your Canvas course and complete the assignments that are due for today.